Good evening. It's good to see everyone again. I thank all of you for sharing and also for joining me and learning together. As you know, the Torah is something that is just beautifully designed, designed to cater to the way we need to live, how we should be living here in this world. Because we seem to forget that we are part spiritual and part physical, but the physical part of it is only temporarily here. Okay? And then we're given this body, and what's amazing about that, we are, this body is a vehicle, a vehicle that the soul is embodied in, in order for it to complete a mission in this physical world. Because a soul that cannot move things, cannot manipulate the physical world. So therefore, God gave us this body in order to maneuver this physical world so we can do what we're created or to complete our mission here because a soul is imperfect and there is um if you will flaws character flaws in it and that we're sent here god sent us down here to fix these character flaws about it it could be stinginess or hatred greed um anger um just you know you name it you know whatever flaws you see in human being if you have those flaws this is the reason why you're here. You have to fix these flaws, okay? That's one of the main reasons that you are in this physical world, okay? So because why, once you get to heaven, there's no fixing. Heaven is a place of reward and punishment, judgment. Did you do the right thing or not, okay? And you're gonna be examined on everything you did while you were here. You're here temporarily. This is not home. This is a corridor you're passing through and there's a mission you need to accomplish why you are here okay honestly you know it's very difficult to understand this but this is the greatest kindness god can do to our soul by bringing us into this world to fix our character flaws in order for us to have in order for us to have heaven and that is just incredible um news for any one of us that can understand this concept okay so i tell you this this is not something easy um to absorb because why this physical body wants to enjoy this world. We all want to enjoy this world, what this world has to offer. It's a beautiful world. God created a beautiful world. But again, that's not the mission. That's not why we're here. We're here to fix us, okay? It's part of the mission. Today, we're going to talk about, again, this goes out to um, our Trinity's maids and uh, um, my father, my mother, my aunties, and everyone else, and people who have passed away. This will go to their marriage to help elevate them. And of course, you know, Israel and what they're going through, um, the terrorist attack, you know. But again, these are God's children. And, you know, we all eventually will know the truth when we leave this world. Whether you want to believe or not, this is temporarily, and we are going to leave this body. And then that's when the truth will be unveiled to us. And most of us are going to be caught in a way that we couldn't even begin to imagine. And by that time, it's too late. So share these videos. So there are four things that we're going to learn today that this, your children at the age of three should know this. All the way up to 18 years old before you leave the house, the same way as they know they have to eat, they have to drink, they have to breathe air. This should be part of what they are. If you can get your children and yourself to understand this four basic principles as far as suffering suffering and being unhappy in this world will be eliminated it will be wiped out can you imagine a mindset where there is no problems at all no worries that no matter what happens to you you're constantly happy have you ever met anyone like that there's no such people that's like that you and i know but again this is what i'm working on myself to reach this level of perfection in terms of no matter what happens, that I'm going to be happy. And the question is, how do I achieve this? The ultimate happiness, the true happiness is what you're going to learn today. How do I achieve the ultimate, the true happiness, okay? It, it does ex exist, ultimate happiness and true happiness. So this is what we're gonna learn today. So again, Please um, share this because, again, we're not going to be happy unless we implement these four basic principles. So it says here, uh, we are taught 
our dreams will come true. If you do this, if you do that. You heard of it, you go to school, you get your career, you get your education, you put four years here, do this, work your way up the ladder, you're gonna achieve your goal. Who do you know in this world is happy? Who do you know in this world is completely happy? Absolutely blitz. It doesn't exist, why? Because God says there will be suffering. Well, how do, you, how do I know? Well, Victor, how do you know this? What, are you a prophet? No. When God cursed Adam and Eve, what did he say to them? You will work hard to the sweat of your brows, and women will have pain during childbirth. That means there's going to be a struggle here. That is guaranteed. Off the top, just being pushed out into this world, you got that. That's coming in. Like they say, I like what they say, two things is certain. Taxes and death. The same way taxes and death is certain, the same way suffering is certain as well. Okay? It's certain. And it says every human being can say they did not have the life they expected to have. I could say that. I know people who could say that. We all come into this world thinking this is what we want, this is what's going to happen. We all have a dream. Everybody has a dream of accomplishment. We all have that. But the question, did you ever achieve that dream? Are you completely blitz? Is it complete happiness? You're not going to find a human being in this world that doesn't possess this information that meet that category. Because why? We were not taught these four basic principles. And it's not easy. It takes years. And it has to be, as I said, something that you learn from childhood all the way up to where you are now. And if we have taught our children this from day one, our children, there's nothing that could be done to them. Basically, they will not be sad about it. Imagine that you have a child that's almost impossible to be sad, no matter what's happening around them. Imagine having that kind of mindset. It's mind-blowing when I think about it, because why? We, we don't live in that kind of world. We live in a world where there's a lot of pain and disappointment and a lot of failures and struggles. And then we, have, we try to deal with it, and none of us can't. We fall into depression. And some of us just accept what it is and try to just live life just to live. We basically exist. We're not living. Most people are just existing. Like a plant just standing there. That's it. We're not living. They're not experiencing what life was designed to be experienced. And the only way to experience that is through God. Life is about adjusting to what it brings you. Making choices each day as we go through this world. Every day we have choices to make. Every day we're making choices. Every moment, every second we are making choices. And a lot of those choices has nothing to do with what we wanted. It's just that we're forced to make a choice in a situation we done, did not even want to be in. But somehow we end up there. But is it accidental coincidence? There is no such word accidental coincidence. Why? Because God runs the world. If God runs the world, how can there be accident or coincidence? That means he's not in control. It's out of his control, out of his hand. There's no such thing. And actually, there's no such words in the Hebrew language. Okay? So, life is not easy for anyone, but it's learn how to deal with it. We are not learned how to deal with it. If you are not taught, life could be seen as misery or massive failure. And people like to judge what they don't know. People love to judge other people or themselves saying, you know, God hates me. You know, God has punished me. Why is this happening to me? So much question, why, 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 why? That could become depression. Be depressing eventually le leads, leads into depression for most people because, why well, I can't do nothing about my situation. And therefore, some people commit suicide, right? If you're in a position you can't feel, and I've been there, I, and, and believe me, it's not an easy thing because you feel like you're out of control you can't manage your life. And that is not the case at all. That is not the, actually, that's the opposite. It's not you can't manage your life. It's God is talking to you. He's trying to get your attention. But you're not aware of that because you're not taught that. You're thinking you're failing because it's not going your way. You're a failure. When it's the opposite, God is trying to get your attention because you're going in the wrong direction and he's trying to maneuver you back on the right track. And the only way to do that, he has to put obstacles in your way. He has to block you off. 
because it's not your plan. It's his plan. And he has to find a way to turn you around. And therefore, it says God will, it says this, man plans, God laugh. Why would God laugh? Why would he laugh? Because why? That's not the plan he has for your life. You're thinking that's the plan, and God says it's not the plan. So because your plan is not going according to you, to your logic, and therefore that can lead to depression, even become a heretic or become an atheist. Why? It's not happening. God hates me. The heck with God. I don't want nothing to do with God anymore. I'm going to do things my way. You see, how can that easily lead to that? I don't want to hear nothing about God. I don't care. You know, I don't care. We can, we do that. Some people do that, or most people could do that. But why most people are not into God? Because again, they don't understand this. And that's why most people are miserable. They really are miserable. And as a matter of fact, my daughter called me today and we were talking and I had to teach her these things I'm about to tell you. And then she got it. She says that it makes sense. She understood that because why? I want my children to understand these four principles early in life because imagine your child, you cannot get angry, cannot be depressed or lose hope. Imagine you always happy, always, no matter what. How do you obtain something like that? Well, as I said earlier, the Superman, Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, King David, Moses, how were these men able to remain connected to God, love God, and happy, and not curse God? Let's look at Job. We're going to look at Job. How is it possible? Because they knew these four basic principles, and we'll get to it. Now, to survive Abraham mindset, to survive we need Abraham mindset, imagine God asks you to go kill your son. The son you've been waiting for a hundred years, the child you've been waiting for a hundred years, he asked you to go kill him. And then Abraham says, God, can I do it now? No, 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 no. Tomorrow morning, go kill him. Okay, God, can I wake up 12? No, no, no. You can do it eight o'clock in the morning. Okay, God, can I get up at one? And no, no, no. God, can I get up at 1 30? No. Two. No. 2 30. No. Three. No. 3 30. No. He's asking God. Can I go kill him now? Why, why are you so anxious to go kill your own child? Can you imagine that? you begging God, can I do it early, go kill my own son? My own son? Where does that mindset come from? Where does that power come from? And this is what we're going to learn today. To have that mindset, that power. And believe me, if you can master this, you can teach your kids to master this, they will never see a therapist, psychiatrist, or be in a hospital because of depression or want to commit suicide, this simply would not be part of their life or even in their vocabulary or even their understanding. Imagine your child doesn't even understand what it means to be depressed or sad. Why? Because you taught them this. And this is where we're going. And I'm trying to master this myself. I'm working on it, even though I got this later in life, but I'm teaching my children and people as well, the students as well, to be able to have the mindset of Abraham wanting to sacrifice his son, a son you've been waiting for a hundred years. You can't wait to do it. Where is this strength coming from? Where is this mindset coming from? Where? We're going to find out. And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when I saw this, it was unbelievable for me to understand this. And I'm sharing this with you. I thank God. So now it says there are four types of, there are four types that will, four things that will happen, four certainty that will happen in this world to all of us. As long as you live long enough, these four things are going to happen to us. There's no escaping. The same way there's gravity, you jump up, you fall down. The sun rotates around the earth, and the earth also rotates as well around the sun. And there's the sun up and sun down, okay? So uh, the ocean, the wave go back and forth. There are things that are absolute that is in this world. So are these four certainty that God implemented into this world. 
that man is going to experience. And these are the four things that drag us into depression, that kills our spirit, that makes us remove us from God. And God commands us to be happy. God says it's a commandment to be happy. Why can't we do what God says to do? So we're going to find out. Okay. So God said, man is cursed. He will work from the sweat of his eyebrow and a woman will suffer from childbirth. Suffering is guaranteed in this world. It's guaranteed. Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, King David, King Saul, Noah, all these people, these supermen, had tremendous amount of suffering. We're thinking we're suffering. The suffering we're feeling today is nothing compared to what they went. Abraham went through 10 tests, including the most difficult test anyone could even imagine is for you to kill your own son you've been waiting for 100 years. Can you imagine? You can't because why? You're not Abraham. Also, you don't have that mindset to understand it. And this is what you're going to get today. Okay? There are many reasons why we must suffer. And these are some of the reasons. One, being redeemed. Our suffering is redeeming us from all our sin. Okay? Our suffering. Two, to bring us back to God. God is he's knocking at your door but you're not listening. So he has to knock harder. And as he's knocking harder, he makes your suffering, he increases your suffering. Why? For you to say, why are you doing this to, to me, God? For you to now talk to God, asking God, why is this happening to me? How many of you have done that? Why me, God? Why you did this to me? I'm innocent. I'm not guilty. I don't deserve this. We do that all the time. And that's another way. God is talking to us God is preparing us for the next event that's going to happen in our life. He's preparing us. He's getting us ready. And like you said, you know, think about it in a weight room. There's nobody going to go in a gym and lift 10 pounds for 10 years. You're going to go in and you're going to look the same way as you went in coming back out. Okay? There was no growth. So this is part of your growth to, for you to become more because why? He created you. You are the creation. He's the creator. He knows your ability. He knows your breaking point. He knows your potential. So he's grooming you to be who you were created to be. Okay, he's grooming you. Another one is because of sin. We suffer because of sin. Also, it refined us and built us up. God also is testing us. He knows, but we don't know our limitations. We think we do, but we don't. But God does. He knows our limitations. So he's testing us. And he's building up. Just like Abraham and King David, they're being tested. Okay? So God is testing us. So don't be angry or disappointed. That's the first one. The first one is there's suffering. You're going to encounter suffering. Okay? That's the first thing you need to understand. There's going to be suffering. Number one. Number two, plans. Every one of us pretty much have a plan for it. Remember when you were a child? Oh, I want to be a doctor, or a lawyer, or a pilot, a mechanic, you know, whatever it is you want to be. You had a plan you wanted to be. Did you achieve that plan? Did everything went according to your plans? No. I don't think there's a human being that could say everything went according to their plan. Why? That's your plan. That's not the plan God has for your life. So your plan is going against God's plan. Guess what? That's why it didn't work. Because God's plan will always win and yours will fail. Okay? Yours will fail. So therefore, when you understand God has a plan for your life, yes, it's okay to have ambition to want to do things, but you have to remember, you're not God. He has a plan. He has a place He wants you to be. And His plan will be completed by you. Either by kicking or complying and accepting it and understanding that everything he does is for your benefit. He's not doing anything for him. Like your children, everything you do, getting up, going to work at a difficult job, putting up with, with a difficult boss, with hours, the, not getting the pay, you know, all the things you don't like about it. Why do you do it? Because why? For your ch son, for your daughter, for your children. So they're the ones benefiting from all your hard work, not you. And God is working hard for us to be who he wants us to be 
but we're the one that benefits from everything that he does for us. God laughs at our plans because man thinks he's going to complete his mission, his plan here. He thinks he's in control. He thinks he's the one running the show. He thinks it's his intelligence that made him a multi-millionaire. It's his intelligence that made him get that promotion. Or it's his beauty or his look that made him get this girl. Or it's, um, it's his prior knowledge to whatever or his thinking or his education that made him successful. He's attributing all his, his success, his success to himself, to his ability. When, let me ask you a question. When you came into this world, did you give yourself this blue eyes? Did you give yourself this gray beard? Did you give yourself the height, the color? Did you design you? You came in like that. You came in design already. You may add to it, by improve it to a certain degree, but you came with the package already, right? And the soul. You didn't put your own soul inside this body. So you didn't do anything. What did you do? And that's the thing people don't understand. You are an infant. Someone took care of you and fed you for 18, 20 years. What did you do for you to be proud of? You didn't do anything. You just took, 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 took. Now you're doing, what are you doing? You're trying to go out there and work, get to school. Why are you going to school, going to college? To take more. But you take it in a different way because they're not going to give it to you for free. But now you're going to take it in a different means of taking by going through school in order, me, in order for me to take what I want. So the taking is not that simple as when you were a child living at home. So now it requires more effort on your part in order for you to take again, to continue taking. His plan for our lives will always be perfect. He is the creator and knows what is best. And a lot of people really think they know what is best for them. No one knows what good is. The only one that knows what good is is God. But nobody knows what good is. God is the one that defines good. Ask anyone who's old enough and they will let you know or they will tell you their lives did not turn out the way they expected it. I know I can tell you this much. I did not expect to be doing these videos, to be educating people, um, those of you out there about the tour, the right way of thinking, what this world is really about, why your dreams or the life or the joy or the happiness, you cannot seem to obtain it. It always seems so far away or unreachable or unattainable. Why? Because you go on against the plan and you go on with wrong information. It's wrong information that puts you where you are today. That includes me too. I was operating by the wrong information. What the world told me I should be doing, which is all a lie. Because if it were true, I would have what I want. You would have what you want if that were true. But we all could say it's not true because I didn't get what I want. All the things I wanted, I didn't get. And it says a man will not even get half of what he wants in this world. That's what the Torah says. You're not going to get half what you want in this world. So if you understand that already, I'm not going to get half of what I want, then what is it I'm supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be pursuing? Well, that is something different. But again, we're supposed to be pursuing God. That's not what you're here for. What you think you're here for is not what it is. Your creation, your creator created you to perfect yourself, to seek him. That's your purpose here. And of course, it's giving you a package that goes along with it. Wife, children, and job. That's part of the package. But again, the ultimate is for you to utilize all these things to serve him and for you to connect with your creator. This is why we are here. There's more to it, but again, that's a general mapping of what we are doing in this world. As I said, um, that we... We came into this world thinking it's going to be that way. And as I said earlier, a couple of videos that I had met someone, the name was Altrinice Mays, and I fell in love with her. She fell in love with me, and it was just really my soulmate. You know, it's like we just mesh perfectly, you know, just beautifully. Everything was just really smoothing with her. The more I got to know her, the more smoothing it became, understanding, you know, and she loved the Torah. And when I talked to her about it. She wanted to know more. It was just really exciting. As you can tell how I'm teaching it, she was really excited to know this. But yet, 
God took her. God took her in a short period of time. Why? I could fall apart. I almost did. It felt like that. But because I started looking at Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, these men, Moses, King David, why these men did not fall apart when their loved one died, when their children died? Why they continue to have joy and pursuing God even more, clinging unto God even more? How, where did they get this power from? Where did they get this mindset not to fall apart and continue this journey of life and be more than what they were before? Where is this coming from? Where is this strength coming from? And this is what we're doing now. So first, we talked about is suffering. They understood that. Second, we talk about a plan. God has a plan for our lives. And third is fear. I will make things fear. I'm sorry, fear. It is fear. Okay? Fear. They did not have fear. They did not have fear. And I'm going to show you. It is a sin to be afraid. If you have fear of the future, fear of people, fear of situation, fear of what's going on in life, anything that creates fear is a sin. The only one you're supposed to fear is God. And God says, part of your punishment for not fearing me and me alone, because this is my world, my creation. You are the creation, I'm the creator. There is nothing but me. Why are you afraid of, those, of my creation? Why are you afraid of my creation? And because you are afraid of my creation, whatever it is that you are afraid of, I'm going to make it happen to you. Listen to that. Whatever you are afraid of is going to happen to you. So fear is another thing that destroys our happiness, our joy. Because why? We're afraid of losing our job. We're afraid of our children dying. We're afraid of losing our home. We're afraid of losing our car. We're afraid of the IRS. We're afraid of the police. We're afraid there might be a war tomorrow. We're afraid someone might break in. We're afraid we might be carjacked. We're afraid of everything but God. You see that? We are in a constant state of fear. We're afraid we might get divorced. We're afraid that my husband is cheating on me, my wife is cheating on me, or you know, we're afraid of losing my bank account. We're afraid, basically, of everything. And God says, where is this coming from? I'm the only one you're supposed to be afraid of. Those things cannot harm you unless I say so. Unless I give explicit detail, they can't hurt you. Unless I'm going to prove that to you. Job. Let's look at Job. Job was afraid. Satan came to God and says, Look, Job only doing these things, worshiping you, loving you, because you're giving them things. Who doesn't love someone when you're giving them things? Think about it. Let's say you went to a job and your boss said, I'm going to give you $5,000 a day. $5,000 a day. Every day you work $5,000. You will not love your, you will not love that boss. And all of a sudden the boss said, nope, I'm not giving it to you anymore. Immediately you probably would hate him. You would hate him because why? You only got it for two or three weeks, $5,000. You were expecting to be 20 years there getting $5,000. And you're angry because you had an expectation to be there for 10, 20 years collecting $5,000 a day. And he only gave you three or two days paying you $5,000. So, so now it turned from loving to hating. So Job, Job had fear that he would lose his money, his children, everything. He was afraid of it. So the Satan came to God and asked God and told God, hey, the only reason he's loving you is because you got all these things. I would love you too, God. If you gave me those things, why not love you? And God says, okay, listen to what God says. That's what I'm saying. You can't fear. I'm giving you permission, Satan, to do whatever you want to do to Job, but don't kill him. So I say, okay, because you said not what not to do. I can't do it. He went and he killed his 10 children, lost all his wealth. He lost all his servant, all his um, stock. Because back then, the more animals, the more stock you had, the richer you were. So he was like a consider a billionaire back then, a billionaire. That's how rich he was. And eventually he lost his health. Now, the interesting thing is this. And this is one of the most, I think this is the most important point besides what I'm going to say is this. Job says, am I to love God only when he's giving me things? 
It's not what we do. We, we, I mean, think about it. People will love someone as long as people are doing things for them. They love them. The moment they stop doing things for them, I hate you. But, but, but I thought you just love me. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was yesterday. Today I hate you. Why? Because you're not doing it anymore. That's people. Ungrateful. Unappreciative. Job was nothing like that. Job said, am I only to love when his wife said, curse God and die? And he said, you wicked, evil woman. Am I only to love God when he's giving me things? Is that the only time I'm supposed to love him? And the moment he takes it away, he stops doing it, I'm supposed to hate him? Then who's bad here? Is it God who's bad or I'm bad? Who's bad? Me or God? He gave me all this wealth for all these years, and he decided to take what he gave me back. I enjoyed 10 kids for 60 years, rich for 60 years, whatever the time was, and he decided to take it back. It's his. So I'm going to be grateful either way. He gives it to me, I'm happy. He doesn't give it to me, I'm happy. I may not be happy in a sense of joy, but I know it's his. He didn't have to give it to me, but he did. And he decided to take it back. And Job had that solid mindset. That's what made this man incredibly strong. How could a man be sad with that kind of mindset? Can you imagine that? Can you be sad if you had that kind of mindset? He gives, he takes. That's it. And a story. He loved me. And he still does. I know that. If he didn't love me, he wouldn't give it to me. God is not evil. He want to torture me. If he wanted to torture me, he wouldn't have given me that wealth. He wouldn't have given me those 10 kids. He would just, from day one, torture. But it's his. It's his world. He'd do whatever he wants. And because I know he's a perfect, loving God, is why I don't need to feel sad, depressed, or anything. Because why? He's talking to me as well. He's telling me, I see you. I acknowledge you. Because that's why I'm doing this to you. And guess what? He passed. Because why did he pass? He didn't get depressed like his wife would want to curse God. He could have. But he didn't. Why? Because God gives, God takes. It's his world and it's an awesome God. And a story for him. And this is what is so admirable about him. He was just a phenomenal human being. And he was a Gentile. He wasn't a Jew. He was a Gentile. He had that much confidence in God. That much trust in God. And when you have that kind of understanding, you're not setting yourself up to be depressed or fail because there's no such thing as a failure. When you have that mindset, there is no such thing as a failure. It's actually the reverse because if a man can go through that and stay sound, lose everything, and if he still have 